So let's think about why you would want to drink milk. What nutrients are in milk and can you get them other places? I mean, why even have this conversation? Because ultimately, most of the conversations that I like to have on this podcast are centered around the importance of nutrients in the human diet and where you get those nutrients. Because I believe that when we think intentionally about the nutrients we're getting in our diets, our overall health improves. And more specifically, I believe that when we think about the nutrients that we're getting in our diets and the anti-nutrients we might be getting in our diets, like phytic acid, which could be preventing the absorption, assimilation, or utilization of those nutrients, our health can really begin to improve. It's kind of a net equation. For instance, people may say almonds are a good source of magnesium, to which I would argue how much of that magnesium are you going to absorb? Very little to none. They might say spinach is a good source of iron. How much of that iron are you going to be able to utilize and absorb? Very little to none because these both of these are divalent cations, these minerals with a plus two charge, that mineral is not very bioavailable in those compounds. In the case of spinach, because of oxalates primarily, which can also chelate, which is just a fancy word for it, bite onto those minerals and prevent their absorption. In the case of almonds and magnesium, phytic acid and other chelating molecules. Almonds are also moderately high in oxalates if you listen to the previous podcast that I've done specifically on that topic. But just looking at something like chronometer, you can put in 500 grams of raw milk, which is 3.5% fat. This is about a whole milk is 3.5% fat. There's no skim milk in this diet. And 500 grams is half a liter. I currently am consuming closer to a liter of raw milk per day, but I just wanted to do a chronometer breakdown of the nutrients in half a liter of milk. Many of you would be familiar with the ounces half a liter or 500 grams of milk is just over 16 ounces. So a large glass of milk, raw milk, full fat milk, is what these nutrients show. So you have 336 calories, you have about 17 grams of protein, 30 grams of carbohydrates, and 17 grams of fat. But it gets really interesting when you look at the nutrients. So you can see just up top here that in 16 ounces of milk, you get 52%, half of your daily recommended daily allowance of calcium. You can see here also that 28% of your RDA for vitamin A is found in just one glass, one large glass of raw milk. That's going to be a mix of beta carotene and retinol palmitate, but I believe the majority of that is the bioavailable form of vitamin A, which is retinol palmitate versus beta carotene. There's 125% of vitamin B12 in raw milk, just one glass, 17% of your RDA for folate. That's a nutrient that's important for methylation, for for neural tube formation in the fetus and important for all humans, but especially for women thinking about conceiving or women who are pregnant. And there's 20% of your RDA for potassium. And this is just in one large glass of raw milk. Breaking it down a little further, you have saturated fats, which are a mixture of things like stearic acid, palmitic acid, fats that are helpful and nourishing for humans and you actually have 0.6 grams of trans fats. This is something important to consider that not all trans fats are the same. These trans fats are not harmful for humans. The majority of these trans fats are things like conjugated linoleic acid. Sometimes that's a little confusing for people when they hear that term. Conjugated linoleic acid is not the same as linoleic acid. Without going into the details of the structure of those two, just suffice it to say that those are two completely different molecules that do different things in the human body. Linoleic acid has many negative effects in the human body, and conjugated linoleic acid appears to have many positive effects in the human body. These are essentially hormones or signaling molecules, and just like one molecule of, that is a hormone such as testosterone and estrogen may only be different by a few atoms, the arrangement of double bonds in things like conjugated linoleic acid and linoleic acid can impact the structure of those molecules in a great fashion. Milk is also a great source of riboflavin, vitamin B2, another critical nutrient for methylation, for mental health, for energy production. Riboflavin is critical for the production of energy in your cells in a process called the Krebs cycle or the TCA cycle. One glass, one large glass of raw milk contains 77% of your RDA for riboflavin. At which point I would ask you, where are you getting your riboflavin if you are not drinking raw milk, if you are not eating heart or eating liver, 
Riboflavin is a really important nutrient. It's a really important B vitamin that is often overlooked. And I think many people are deficient in this nutrient who are not eating animal products. There's really no good way that I've found to get your riboflavin without eating animal products. Liver is perhaps the best source along with heart, which is why I'm such a fan of those two organs and I eat them basically daily, either fresh or desiccated from heart and soil. And milk is a great source of riboflavin as well. 